Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Justine Lee. I'm a board certified emergency critical care veterinary specialist and toxicologist, and my goal is to help keep your dog and cat out of the ER vet. Today, we're going to be talking about separation anxiety, and I'm going to talk about this because I'm actually really worried we're going to see a big spike in this once pet owners go back to work whenever COVID eventually ends. We'll be right back after these messages. Are you listening to this right now with a cell phone clenched between your teeth as you frantically flip pages on your paper calendars? Or are you a new breed of groomer, bred for speed and efficiency of movement? 123 Pet Software automates your communications, doing the reminding, confirming, thanking, and marketing for you. 123 Pet centralizes your schedule, employees, clients, inventory, and more. 123 Pet is the business management software you need. Start minding your business today. Visit 123petsoftware.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. Today, I'm going to talk about separation anxiety. Now, in a previous episode of ER Vet, we actually brought on a board-certified veterinary behaviorist to also discuss this, so check that out. But what I'm worried about as a veterinarian is COVID. Once people start returning to work, I'm worried that dogs and cats are going to react to this. I will say I'm really happy that during the onset of COVID back in March of 2020, what we were seeing was animal shelters were being bombarded with requests to foster and adopt. And that's because people were at home the whole time. It was the perfect time to get a puppy because you were home all day to help let them out and care for them. I will also say that I've noticed a lot of neighbors walking their dogs. I have neighbors that I didn't even know had dogs walking dogs, and I would see them walking several times a day. So the good thing about COVID is I think people were getting out and exercising their dogs more frequently. I will also say that animal rescues were actually cleared out from animals. In fact, it was such a phenomenal time for adoption and fosters. I know several that were completely empty, which is amazing news. Now, that said, you have to be aware during COVID, a lot of veterinary clinics closed down temporarily or they moved to curbside practice. What does that mean? Well, to keep our own staff safe, a lot of veterinary clinics moved to curbside, which means pet owners weren't allowed to come into the veterinary clinic. That means that someone would come out to the car, they would give you some forms to fill out, and then they would take your pet and bring them inside. And you often would drive away and we would end up having to call you. Now, where I practice at Animal Emergency and Referral Center in Minnesota, we are still curbside even six to nine months later. And I will say most veterinary clinics are bombarded and super, super busy right now. Part of that is because everyone was adopting dogs and cats, which is fantastic. But because curbside takes longer and more and more pets were getting adopted, a lot of veterinarians weren't able to take new clients because they were so backlogged and so busy. I will also say that during the beginning of COVID, veterinarians weren't allowed to do elective procedures. So we weren't allowed to do dental cleanings or spays or neuters or lump removals or basic surgeries. And the main reason why was we were trying to preserve PPE for human medicine to make sure they didn't run out of masks and sterile gloves and gowns and things that they would need to care for humans that were affected by COVID. 
So that's why there's a big backlog. Not only were more pets being adopted, not only did veterinary clinics move to curbside, not only were vets shut down from doing elective procedures for conservation of PPE, but all these things resulted in a massive backlog of you trying to get an appointment with your veterinarian. So I'm going to tell you, please be patient. If you did adopt a new pet, a new dog or a cat, please call your veterinarian because they do need an annual exam. What I'm seeing now is I'm seeing a huge spike in parvovirus as a veterinarian because a lot of these pets never even made it into the veterinary clinic to get vaccinated. When that happens, that's actually resulting in your dog not being protected if you take them to a dog park. If you walk your dog at a city park, they can pick up a disease easily and it's spreading it to the rest of the dogs in that area or in your neighborhood. So if you did adopt a new pet within the past year, please make sure to get to a veterinarian for the vaccines and important preventative medicine that is necessary to keep your pet healthy. Again, that's going to include flea and tick medication and heartworm medication. Okay, so now what are we going to do? Because of COVID, a lot of dog owners weren't able to get to puppy obedience. So now I'm seeing a lot of crazy cooped up pooches. My firm belief is there's really only two to three basic rules of dog ownership. First rule, 30 minutes of exercise a day. That's either two 15 minute walks or pretty intensive exercise like throwing the Frisbee or throwing a ball. My second rule is taking two semesters of puppy obedience. Even if you adopted an adult dog, I don't care how old your dog is, you can always teach and old dog new tricks. It is so important that you go through two semesters of puppy obedience because this is gonna stimulate your dog's brain, provide environmental enrichment, but it's also gonna make sure that your dog listens to you. I see so many disobedient dogs, dogs that are jumping on people, dogs that don't understand basic commands. And I will say the most important part of puppy obedience is actually training you. Now, when I had my first dog, he was a pit bull. And he was a pit bull puppy that went through two levels of puppy obedience. And he was an elite level obedience dog. This is really important because I promise it makes dog ownership so much better for you, your family, and your neighbors. And don't forget your veterinary staff. The more that your dog listens to you, the better the quality of life for everyone involved. So puppy obedience is really important. I know a lot of training facilities are actually still shut down because of COVID, but please be aware as a responsible pet owner, you still have to do puppy obedience. There are great resources out there online, but when it comes to finding a good dog training place, you want to check with your veterinarian. Now, if you can't get in touch with your vet, you want to rely on more than just Yelp or Google reviews. My general rule is you want to pick a dog training facility that uses positive association with training. What does that mean? That means if your dog does something good, then it gets a reward. It gets a tasty piece of hot dog or a tasty piece of a freeze-dried liver treat. We don't use negative association. I am not a fan of using things like shock collars or prong collars or any kind of physical punishment. We never want to do that in dogs, okay, or cats. So when in doubt, you want to make sure it's a training facility that emphasizes positive association and positive training. Now, I will also say I'm a huge fan of dog trainers that use either a gentle leader to help train your dog how to walk on a leash or that they use clicker training. One of my favorite dog training resources is going to the Karen Pryor clicker training. So again, make sure your dog, even though they're cooped up during COVID, undergoes two semesters of dog training. You can learn a lot of this online. You can take some online courses. You can go to a dog training facility that does social distancing. But this is so important to teach your dog general etiquette and the five to six basic commands that they should know. All right. So you adopted a dog or cat during COVID, you're walking them a lot, you're providing a great environment, you're calling your veterinarian to make sure you get them vaccinated, spayed, neutered, and on appropriate preventative medicine. You're signing them up for some type of obedience training, which is super, super important. And the third thing I want you to do and start implementing is crate training. This is especially important if you have a puppy. Why? This is especially important if you have a Labrador Retriever puppy or Golden Retriever puppy. Now, these two breeds are very, very food motivated, which is fantastic. 
because it means it's easier to train them. Now, most adult dogs who have never seen a crate before will not go into a crate easily. So I really only advocate this for young puppies. A lot of people crate train inappropriately. They use the crate as punishment. When the dog is bad, they say, go to your crate. That's not actually what we want to do. We want to create a safe space within that crate. This is designed to mimic the den. So you should always do great positive things in the den. Whenever you feed your dog, you should feed them in the crate. Whenever your dog goes to sleep, you should leave a comfortable blanket, a couple of toys in the crate. Whenever you give your dog a treat, you should always give it to them in the crate. So again, we want to create that safe space for your dog to go. And again, crates are a great way of helping confine your pet into one area for the day. Again, positive associations with this safe space. So treats in there, rewards in there, really, really important for when you're not going to be home. The next important part when it comes to preparing your dog during COVID for you to go back to work is desensitization. Now, if you know you're gonna be going back to work twice a week or five times a week, well, I hate to break it to you, but your dog is so used to spending 24 seven with you. And remember, dogs are really perceptive. So they're gonna pick up on physical cues that you may not know you're giving your dog. For example, when you put on your shoes, Or when you pick up your keys or put on your jacket, that's triggering your dog that you're leaving the house. So before you go back to work, you want to start acclimating your dog to such behaviors. So randomly just put on your jacket and then take it off five minutes later. An hour later, randomly pick up your keys five times in a row. Randomly get up, go to the garage door, walk outside, and then walk right back in. All of these things will help desensitize your dog to the potential new schedule of you going back to work. The more you can do this, the more it'll prepare your dog that you're going back to work and it can help reduce your dog's anxiety. The next important part, help encourage alone time. Again, our pets are so used to us being glued to their side during quarantine. So it's important that you have some alone time for your pet. Go outside for a walk for five minutes without your pet. Run a short errand. Do this a few times a day. If you're used to having your dog sit underneath their desk on their dog bed, maybe move the dog bed to another location and give them a great treat that they hardly ever get. Consider using dog puzzles or toys as a way of enticing your pet into another room so they have some alone time where they can be entertaining themselves for extended periods of time. The next part of minimizing separation anxiety in your dog is by making sure that you're giving positive association when you come back. Now, I will say one of the classic mistakes that I see pet owners making is inappropriate reward. What do I mean by that? Classic scenario. You let your dog outside. The dog is barking. You know it's annoying the neighbors. So you go outside, give your dog a bone in order to try to keep them quiet. Well, you just rewarded your dog for barking outside. All your dog thinks is, oh, I've been barking for half an hour and now my owner's giving me a bone. I must have done something right. So again, you always want to make sure you're giving appropriate positive or negative feedback. Same exact thing with crate training. Say you crate trained your dog. All of a sudden, you decide to leave the house. The big thing that we do as pet owners is we baby talk to our pets. And I'm totally guilty of that. What you don't want to do is encourage bad behavior. For example, if you're leaving the house, try not to baby talk too much and make a big deal out of it. Just leave. When you come home, instead of saying, hey, Fluffy, I'm home, yay, and making all this noise as your dog is barking in the crate and so excited to see you, if you open the door, you're rewarding your dog for bad behavior of being happy to see you. Now, obviously, I know it sounds really hard. We obviously want to see our dog. We're happy to see them. But it's actually better for you to wait until your dog is calm in the crate, lying down before you decide to open the door or pass them a treat. So reward them when they're showing calm behavior and then you open the crate door. Let's continue with this really important topic right after these messages from our sponsors. It's October and there are spooky scares everywhere. When it comes to your dog's everyday health, you don't have to be spooked when you have Daily Dose. Daily Dose is a two-in-one dog chew that pairs a powerful dental scrub with vet-developed supplements for full body health and seriously clean smiles. Now pay attention. Through October 31st, 
enter for a chance to win all four bags of daily dose in coming joint, heart, and skin health. Just post a picture of your pup smile with the hashtag Serious Smile Sweeps to any of Pet Life Radio's Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook pages. Good luck! <laughs> Visit yourpetsdailydose.com to save $3 on your first bag with promo code PETLIFE. That's yourpetsdailydose.com. So now I've got this pack of four Sharpe Rescue dogs for, oh my goodness, probably five, six years. They get a regular diet of Dynavite with every meal. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot People remark on what beautiful coats they've got. I tell them, you don't need to wait until a problem presents itself. It's far better to keep the dog happy and healthy at all times. You won't believe how happy your dog will be. I get my Dynavite from D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. Today, we've been talking about separation anxiety in the midst of a pandemic during COVID. Now, as we pet owners start to go back to work, I'm actually really worried that our dogs are going to really suffer from separation anxiety. Not that I'm leaving the cat owners out of this conversation, but as a cat owner myself, I will tell you, your cat could care less if you're going back to work. They're probably excited to have some loan time, but our dogs are definitely going to be more anxious about this. So we've talked about during COVID, veterinarians are super, super busy. We're curbside only. So you want to make sure your pet is healthy. First way, call your veterinarian right away. Make sure your dog or cat are up to date on their vaccines. Make sure they're on the appropriate preventative medicine. The second thing we want to do is if you have that new dog, that new puppy, you want to make sure to get two levels or two semesters of puppy obedience in, in order to socialize your dog and train you on how to train your dog. Third thing we want to do is we want to make sure we create that safe space for your dog while you're gone. We want to start crate training your dog while they're a puppy. Make sure to use positive associations. Make sure to give them their meals and treats within the crate and make sure to leave the crate door open even when you're home. A really well crate trained dog is going to sleep in it like a den. And what you'll notice is your dog's going to go in to lay down and sleep instead of just lying on the floor. The fourth thing we want to do is make sure that we encourage alone time, either take short walks just to give some independent play or independent time away so you can physically distance just so your dog gets used to you being gone from the house. Make sure that you're using appropriate desensitization, random things like picking up your keys, putting on your shoes, opening the door, making sure that you're helping to do this so your dog's not sensitive and picking up on these physical cues and triggering more anxiety. The next thing that we talked about is making sure that we're using appropriate positive and negative feedback. Try not to baby talk when you're leaving the house or entering the house. Make sure to only open the crate door and let your dog out when they're calm. Ultimately, these are easy steps to help prepare our dogs for our departure when we go back to work. Now, I'm going to say there's a couple of easy things you can do. You can always get some kind of nanny cam so you can spy on your dog and see how they're doing. Please make sure to also consider taking lunch breaks where you can go home and take your dog for a short walk just so they're still getting the same amount of exercise. When in doubt, prepare for the worst. If your dog does have severe separation anxiety, please work with a veterinarian, a veterinary behaviorist, or a trainer. For once, I'm going to say, just say yes to drugs. There are some dogs that chew through their crate, they fracture their teeth, they end up um, having their nose all bloody because they're really, really just pawing or abrading it on the crate. Some dogs will start eating through sheetrock or through closet doors because they're so anxious. That is not fair to your dog. Your dog's super anxious, and if it's that severe, we don't want your pet to be harmed in the process, and for their own well-being, say yes to drugs. 
There are veterinary prescription medications that we can use, really, really safe antidepressants or anti-anxiety medications. Yes, dogs take the dog version of Prozac, and that's okay. Same thing with cats. You can always start with holistic supplements. There's a bunch of pheromones you can consider, even um, milk casein products. So a lot of holistic options out there. When in doubt, we always want to play it safe and make sure our pets are calm and that we're minimizing the risk of any kind of separation anxiety. I will also say, when in doubt, please seek professional assistance as needed. Dog trainers are definitely helpful when it comes to training, but I'm gonna say if it's more severe, you wanna get a veterinary behaviorist involved. And a veterinary behaviorist will have extra quote letters and quote behind their name. Not only are they a veterinarian, but they're also a diplomat of the American College of Veterinary Behavior. So they're gonna have the abbreviation D-A-C-V-B. When you see that, that means that they're the experts in the area when it comes to behavior. And they may actually work with you, your veterinarian, and a dog trainer to help. And oftentimes that may involve medication. When in doubt, please help adapt your dog or your cat to the new routine of going back to work. Make sure we're keeping our pets safe. Make sure that we prep the environment. We've crate trained them. We've gotten a nanny cam. If all else fails, when in doubt, turn to your veterinarian and prepare for the worst because there's a lot of things we can do to make sure that our pets are protected and safe during this time. Well, that brings me to the end of today's show. Find me at drjustinelee.com, on Facebook or Instagram at Dr. Justine Lee, or email me at drjustine at petliferadio.com. And if you like this podcast, please consider leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. With that, we're out of time, and we want to thank Mark Winter, our producer, for making this show possible. See you at the next episode. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.